Hello friends! In this video we will be assembling the Altair computer with all the boards that we have made in previous videos and try to power it on. As you can see in this intro, the computer does eventually power on, but let's find out if it was assembled correctly and actually runs properly. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is install the backplane or the motherboard. And to mount the backplane, we can use the M3 10mm brass spacers here. Uh, they will uh, be installed right into these holes here. There's quite a few holes here. We just need to use the six holes for the, the MITS uh, backplane. And uh, on the other side of the case, it's a good idea to scrape off some paint around where the uh, fittings come through. So when the washer uh, touches the case, it actually grounds uh, everything on the case and then we can install the the washers and here we're using the M3 multi-tooth washers and these washers help uh, create a better connection to ground the case to the motherboard. The spacers can be tightened with uh, M3 nuts and uh, once they're hand tightened we can use a, a quarter inch uh, socket would work well just to tighten them a little bit better. With the case upright, the backplane should simply lower into the case and the mounting spacers will align quite well with the mids mounting holes on the backplane. To mount the backplane to the case, we can just use the 3M screws again, uh, this time 6mm long, and tighten uh, all six of them with a screwdriver. Notice how the backplane is grounded with these screws. The power supply connector can then be plugged in into the backplane. The interface board, which we assembled in a previous video, is installed in the second slot of the backplane. And using uh, the 50 connection cable that we also made in a previous video, connect the front panel board with the interface board. The CPU board, which we also assembled in a previous video, is typically installed into the first slot of the backplane. When installing the CPU board, ensure that the 50 connection cable is long enough for the CPU board to fit snugly. And using the 8 connection cable that we also assembled in the previous video, make sure to watch that, connect the interface board with the CPU board. Before continuing, it's usually a good idea to power on the computer to ensure that the boards that we have currently installed are not showing any signs of defects. We could call this a smoke test. As we can see here, the interrupt light is on, uh, so the CPU is sending some sort of signal, which is a good sign. With the power off again, let's talk about the last board, the RAM board. I acquired this one here from eBay. It's an original 4K static RAM board that was created by SD Sales in 1976. To build an original board similar to this one would be quite difficult since some of the required components are no longer manufactured. There are other boards that could be used for RAM, including Mike Douglas's FDC Plus board, but this one came out to be cheaper. Although we might install the FDC Plus board into this computer in the future, so be on the lookout for that. Let's install this board into the next slot of the backplane and try it out. The eBay listing did state that it was a working board, so let's see what happens. With the computer running, let's uh, do a hard reset by toggling the stop and reset switches at the same time. That seems to reset the CPU, which is good. Uh, we can see that memory address 0 is actually showing all ones, which is actually unusual. Uh, it's usually something random. But let's go ahead and examine a couple of other addresses here, and it's still showing all ones for all of them, so something doesn't look right here. Let's try depositing something into an address. So if we go to uh, examine uh, address 0, which is what, sh what the toggle switches are showing and deposit zero into it, it should turn off all the LEDs because that would be zero, but it's not doing that. So something's up with our RAM board. It's either not reading properly or not writing properly. So let's investigate. With a full reset, I want to see if maybe some of the RAM chips are just gone. So maybe some of them may still work. So here I'm trying the upper chips to see if any of them actually work and they all seem to be showing the same unusual value, which is does, does not look promising. 
Uh, let's toggle some of these other ones. The very upper ones. A12, A13, A14, A15. They don't seem to be... Oh, look at that. A14. Something different. Not A13, but A14 definitely has something. Let's try A14. One, two. So yeah, there's something here. These RAM chips seem to be working. Um, so either... Uh, the, the lower RAM chips are gone, or maybe there's some kind of configuration that needs to be changed on the RAM board itself. And looks like there is. According to the RAM board documentation, there is a memory select block on the board, which we can set to start at the first block. So I took the board out of the computer, and I can see here the memory select. A is set to not A, B to not B, but C is set to C. So let's set it to not C and leave D set to not D. And uh, that should select the first block of memory. Um, so let's put this board back in and try it out. And let's do a hard reset again. And uh, look at that, we have a couple of memories. Select. Okay, so it's showing the upper limits correctly. Let's uh, examine memory address zero. Okay, look at that. It's showing some garbage data, which is a good thing. That means it's working properly, actually. And if we deposit one into memory address one, two into two, three into three, four into four, and let's see, five. So that seems to be working, which is a good sign. That means the RAM is at least working on the lower limits as well. So that is very good. Great. Uh, let's, uh, let's do another test, but this time let us program it with a real program. Uh, the program that, that I want to use is called Kill the Bit. And here's the uh, uh, assembly code for it. And also at the bottom here, we have some uh, octals for entering into the Altair computer itself. So let's use these octals to program our computer. Uh, with the computer on, let's go ahead and do a hard reset again to reset the computer and uh, set our memory address to zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and start entering the program into the computer. I'm just gonna speed it up here so you don't have to wait. And uh, the documentation that I was just displaying for the uh, for this program it's all in octal so it makes it a little easier to enter it into the computer and the nice thing about the Altair is you can just toggle deposit next and it deposits it into the next memory address so it's actually pretty convenient to do so all right run the program and then you have to toggle a switch and what happens is this we have a bunch of lights coming through on the screen here if we can call that front panel and we have to toggle the switch where the light lands on and if we miss there's going to be more lights and we win the game by basically toggling right at the where there you go toggle that one and we won the game and we can just reset it toggle it again and run it so this is actually a good sign that means the computer is actually working in this case i just messed up the lights but uh the computer is actually working properly which is a good sign it doesn't happen often that something just works right out of the box, so I'm glad that we didn't have to spend too much time debugging or fixing solder points. Uh, that's great. I'm going to go ahead and put the case cover on this computer and finalize it. The cover slides on actually pretty easily, and on the sides there's two screws that we can just screw, one on the left, one on the right, and that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed this video on the Altair 8800 build, please do like and subscribe for YouTube's algorithm. Until next time.